I would never have thought that would be the case. We got to see what I thought was the coolest part. When they were doing research for the movie Coco, Disney Pixar actually came to this exact location. We thought we were done being surprised for the day, but boy were we wrong when we got here. In all of our travels through Mexico, I've never seen something like this. There is so, so much to love about Oaxaca in the daytime, but I think it just gets this whole other vibe at night. Like Hello, Tangerines! Hello from Oaxaca City, Oaxaca. It is a gorgeous Sunday morning here, something like 70. Yeah. I yeah. think it's like 70. 70, okay. Well, it's it always starts off really cool in the morning, at least for the past like couple days we've been here. And then it warms up in the afternoon to like 80, so I've been really enjoying the cooler, not so humid temperatures <laughs> compared to where we're living now mm -hmm. in Quintana Roo. Yeah, it's been really nice to be <laughs> able to walk around and walk places and Yeah, I've been be thoroughly, located. thoroughly enjoying that. <laughs> yeah, me too. So, what are we doing today? <laughs> we are going to a few nearby towns that were highly recommended to us. Towns filled with some of the richest culture of Oaxaca, so I'm super excited. And by the end of this video, I also hope to be able to pronounce them all correctly. Not even, not even gonna bother right now, I'd probably <laughs> butcher the crap out of them. So, you're just gonna have to see for yourself. Let's go. We just got to San Bartolo Coyotepec, which is our first stop on today's tour, and this is where all the black pottery in Oaxaca that you see is made. So we're about to see a demonstration of the process and what makes some blacker or shinier than others versus the brown type of pottery. I'm really excited because this is like, I feel like such a big part of Oaxacan culture. Learning about Oaxaca's pottery making process was totally eye-opening. I never would have imagined how much goes into just harvesting the clay and refining it, and that's all before they start working with it to turn it into pottery items. Here in this village, there's a mine where they are able to extract the clay. Only men can, can visit the mine. Women are not allowed to visit. We quickly learned that it takes way more skill than you probably think to create each of these pottery items. It is a tedious process and they use the traditional method to spin the piece on two discs by hand. There's no mechanical tools involved whatsoever. We watched this woman turn a literal hunk of clay into an almost finished work of art. Depending on the item's shape and intended purpose, it will undergo many steps of smoothing and drying and refining before it's ready to cook. And finally, we got to see what I personally thought was the coolest part, where she took a very sharp tool, a lot of patience, and a very steady hand to carve out these extremely intricate designs into the almost ready to cook cantarito, or maybe cantaro in this case. Around Oaxaca, you'll see a lot of black pottery, and then there's also brown. Well, as it turns out, for the brown stuff, they use a kiln like this, and they leave the top uncovered, but when they cover the top, it keeps all the ashes in there and it turns all the pottery black, which I would never have thought that would be the case. I thought for sure it was just black clay that they were using. Many pieces get broken in the process and it's, that is useless anymore. They cannot reuse. So we don't have much space. We can never buy much stuff at all, so we're getting a little dolphin. <laughs> the tiniest little fat dolphin, so cute. Stop number two. So about a hundred years ago, plastic came around and it totally decimated this town that made its living off of making pottery and everyone wanted the cheaper plastic containers. And, and by the way, to hold water, because originally these containers were all meant to store water. So mm -hmm. when plastic came around, that became probably the cheaper and maybe more long lasting option. Yeah. Then. In about 1940, this lady named Dona Rosa found a way to polish this and it made the demand go way up for it. Because kind of, instead of just being a utility item to hold water, then all yeah. of a sudden it was for decoration and, I mean, these pieces are just beautiful. Mm -hmm. The kind of thing that you would want sitting around your house. <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, so that revitalized the town and made the sales go way up. So every one of these little notches was carved out by hand. So much work went into that and then to polish it, they have to go over it with a stone three times in every little small place. It's a lot of work. of San Bartolo Coyotepec and now we are headed to the home of the Alebrijes. Where we will learn how to pronounce that town's name. <laughs> type two. We'll get right back to the video in a moment but we just wanted to let you guys know that if you've been wanting to learn Spanish right now is a great time to start because our favorite Spanish language program is on sale right now. Rocket Languages is running their Labor Day sale. We'll link to that below in the description and you can even start a free trial before you decide whether it's for you or not. If you purchase it through our link it won't cost you anything more than what it would just going directly to the website but we will get a nice chunk of change from that which helps us make more trips like this one to Oaxaca. I'm gonna be a little bit disappointed if we don't see real life Ali Brijes here. Real uh, like, life? Like from the movie Coco, where they're flying around. <laughs> <laughs> we would have to die first though. Oh shit. Uh, okay, let's not do that. <laughs> After arriving to the workshop of Jacobo and Maria Angeles, we got a demonstration about how they hand mix all the colors using parts of the sacred copal tree. Its wood goes for the pieces, its bark, for example, to make colors. We use its sap to make incense and we use um, the sawdust to fix the pieces. With white zinc, lime juice, and other natural elements, they can change the color of the copal bark to create an entire rainbow of colors. When they were doing research for the movie Coco, Disney Pixar actually came to this exact location to learn about the history and learn about the Alebrijes. And one of the characters from that movie was actually the chef here. Seeing all the steps to making these alabrijes really makes you appreciate them even more because not only do they have all these details but it goes through so many steps to get where it is. They have to dry out the wood, uh, put it through the oven to kill any bugs or anything that might be on it. Then from there they go to a carving station where they carve all these intricate details of whatever animal it's going to be and after the carving station it goes to people who train for years and years and years to paint these alebrijes and with these incredibly minute details. We got to see steps starting at beginner painters all the way up to their masters. Here where they're going to show them how to decorate for the first time, we are divided in three levels. One for example in this first table, which is beginners. The maximum that someone can take of time will be one year, level one, level two. Seeing the shop they have in here, there's just so much detail. It's, it's absolutely incredible. The prices are higher than most places around, but you can tell they're, they're artists and it really takes a lot of skill to get where they've gotten and so many hours put into every single one of these pieces. This tour was probably my favorite thing that we've done in Oaxaca. This was a blast and we learned so much. So now we're in town looking at various shops of different artists who make their own alebrijes and I love these. We've got like Sassy Owl who's like, Hi! We've got Sassy Crab. <laughs> I love this fox here. And this one, yeah. Oh, just the detail on all of these. Wow. Cool. What's your favorite? Choose a favorite now. No puedo. <laughs> no puedo. <laughs> we saw some more alebrijes at the park over here, so we're going to check those out. I just can't get enough of these. This whole town is alebrijes. One thing I really love about looking at these alebrijes is that not only are each one different, like the wood is carved in a different way, but each artist has basically their own handwriting that they're painting. So some of them are more floral, some of them have more patterns on them based on the way probably that they've been taught, passed down from generation to generation. We're just about to leave the town of Alebrijes is what I'm going to call it right now but before we head to the next destination where they make textiles we're going to have a mezcal tasting because our tour guides have their own mezcal that they produce. Mezcal is pretty common here in Oaxaca. It's a 
very artisanal thing. Lots of families produce it on a small scale. Here in Oaxaca there are more than 20 different kinds of wild agaves. The only one we cultivate is called Espadín. This is a rare one, it's very different. It's a small uh, agave and it's called Tobala. The characteristic of Tobala is it's a little bit sweeter at the end. Also it's destillated in butter pots not in cooper pots so that's add a smoother flavor and also it's amber color because it has spent six months in barrels in oak barrels as okay. as the whites no so it's es un mezcal reposado it's a mm -hmm. reposado mezcal so please come here Gracias. Gracias. drink slowly please it's not a shot drink and what is this that it's in the, is it like a seed pod? It's a seed pod from Morro seed. Oh. And Morro. Uh, oh my gosh, we use bugs. Morro for drink mezcal because it don't have the smell. And also it is open or white so you can smell first. If you see me going like this, it's because these little bugs, Tiny bugs. love this wood that the alley previous are made out of. And they're flying all over us. They love me. <laughs> mm. Very smooth. Get it off! Oh <laughs> <laughs> they keep wanting to land on my yeah. eyes. <laughs> mm, it is really sweet. Oh, I like this. Mm -hmm. I like this a lot. It's good. And you didn't make any faces. <laughs> no. <laughs> Which, if you know me, that means it's smooth. <laughs> Here in, in Mexico, oh, traditional okay. medicine, cedron leaf. Oh my really gosh, it tastes so good. For uh, stomach aches. Oh. It's very digestive. Oh. So, I really like it. Yeah. How about you? I love this. It definitely has a lot of herbal notes, like maybe lemongrass, mint. Both in taste and smell. Mm -hmm. This one is a lemon verbena or cidron, right? Yeah. Where they put this, the lemon verbena plant in there to like infuse the herbal essences. And oh my gosh, it's one of the best, if not the best, flavored infused mezcals I've ever had. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Now that we finished up with the mezcal tasting, we are headed just down the road to this town called Santo Tomas Jaliesa. Santo Tomas Jaliesa. Where they use looms and they make lots of textiles. We thought we were done being surprised for the day, but boy were we wrong when we got here and learned about how these textiles are made. Get ready to have your mind blown by this craft. These women fasten a tie around their waist and weave intricate designs to create these incredibly intricate and amazing looking textiles. One piece takes an average of seven hours a day for three days to complete and then they only charge 300 pesos which just seems absolutely bonkers to me for 21 hours of work and of course that includes the materials as well. So naturally we had to go exploring and see what we might like to take home. So we've seen many things like this in our travels through Mexico and these are definitely the cheapest prices we've ever seen. But you have to endure the bugs to get here, <laughs> to look at them, to enjoy them. And I am enjoying this. This type of stuff is like my favorite thing in the world, just looking at all these art uh -huh. it's, oh. Does this remind you of anywhere? Um, we've seen something similar to this in Ajijic. Chapala, to be exact. Chapala, mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Oh, this is a nice tote. You know what I like this? Oh, you have a little... Muñeca. Oh, see. Muñeca. 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 No sé. Muñeca. 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 In all of our travels through Mexico, I've never seen something like this on the end of a belt, or no. uh, in this case, it's to tie the bag. I love this. Oh, <laughs> I'm so happy. He's distracted right now, and I'm gonna go do something without her. Oh, no. <laughs> you know what time it is. El Centro of El Centro. Oh, there's a nice echo in here. All right, let's go see what Maddie's up to. Caca! Caca! Total betrayal. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> I don't know if she's serious or not. <laughs> So 
this is a tour that we found off of Airbnb and I think this might be one of the best tours we've taken in Mexico. The transportation was taken care of, every like little detail went so smoothly and we learned so much along the way. Like I think this is my favorite thing that we've done in Oaxaca. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, for me particularly, the alabrijes part of it. I thought that was so cool. Yeah, I don't know that I can pick a favorite part because I liked it all a lot. <laughs> Hopefully you guys had fun coming along with us and seeing some of the culture and uh, history, the background behind the scenes of what makes Oaxaca so special. The more I see of it, the more I love this state and city. So we paid about 50 bucks a person for that tour. Mm -hmm. Just not having to deal with the transportation and getting driven around in a nice SUV all day long. Air conditioned. I SUV, yeah, by the way. <laughs> I think that alone could make the tour worthwhile, but it was so much more than that. Oh yeah, I mean that's just one element of what made this such a great experience. Oh gosh. <laughs> so our guide from today recommended that we check out this place called Mayordomo, I believe, Casa Mayordomo, for some traditional and authentic Oaxacan food. So I'm very excited. This has been a fun-filled day, but long, and we haven't eaten anything. Above me is some of the most probably the most impressive papel picado or um, cut paper that I've ever seen in so many different colors completely covering the ceiling. So with this dish I got chicken and mole and I could choose between red mole and black mole. They brought this out I thought for sure it was black mole so I asked but it is indeed red mole and it is so flavorful I love it. I'm really, surprised really you've been loving mole so much because you I tried know. it somewhere and it, you really did yeah, not like it. Yeah, I've tried it a couple times before and I didn't like it at all. So but Oaxaca just does their mole. Do <laughs> well, and good? I got memelitas, which I'm really digging here. They're somewhat like sopes, which I also really love. But I think the difference might be that they have a base of beans instead of like a red sauce or something. And then probably some type of crumbly Oaxacan cheese on them. Very good, made with a corn base. And I got crema de elote because that's just what I'm all about. I love corn, I guess. <laughs> mm. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. people here, as many vendors as one's heart could ever desire. Um, it's a Sunday night. Sunday night, so probably as busy as it gets, unless of yeah. course last night was busier. But there's like a concert going on, tents set up of some kind, um, everyone selling anything that you could possibly think of. Tons of people came out along the big walking street here. <laughs> Tons of people doing street performances with musical instruments. I've seen quite a few um, still artists. I don't know what you call them. They paint themselves up and then they sit there. Oh yeah, I, I don't know what they're called <laughs> I don't know either. What you call that. <laughs> Here's what Maddie called a still artist. <laughs> I don't know. There is so, so much to love about Oaxaca in the daytime, but I think it just gets this whole other vibe at night. Like you would not, ex I would not expect a city like this that's so rich in culture to have a nightlife. Like you go walking up and down the streets, there's quite a few bars and kind of like club looking places. And then of course, all this stuff that just people just come out at night and sell anything they can think of, anything they have to sell, and then performers like this as well. It's just like, whoa, <laughs> you wouldn't expect that. Uh, 
mayo y sal. Mayonesa, sí. queso. Así. Con todo, mayonesa, queso picante. Uh, un poquito de mayo. Mayonesa, uh, no picante, uh, limón. Queso. Queso, por favor. ¿Qué precio tienes? ¿De los dos? Sí. 55. Está bien, más limón. Más limón, por favor. Muchas gracias. So you got something to the effect of chips in a bag plus awesome esquites. Yeah, this is like taco in a bag or what do we call that growing up? Um, walking tacos. Walking tacos. Yeah, I've never had this before. It looks awesome. Hey there. Mm -hmm. Dougie, where are you going? Before you go, we have linked two things on the end screen. One is our first Oaxaca video, if you haven't seen it yet, please go check that out. And the other is our binge watch everything playlist where you can see all the videos we've ever made and join the hundreds, if not thousands of people who have gone down that rabbit hole. No, let me let me rephrase that. That, if you want to binge watch everything, you're joining the Tangerine Elite. Oh yes, <laughs> the Tangerinis. <laughs> anyway though, thank you for watching this video. Please consider subscribing to our channel to see more videos we are putting out about our travels in Mexico and the world. Oh, and also if you want to see this cute little lady with her tongue sticking out the side of her mouth. And uh, one more, in th one more very important thing. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We gotta gong the bell. And gong that bell so you get notified the next time we put out our next Oaxaca video. Ah, mosquitoes! <laughs> we'll see you there. <laughs>